Hi everyone, Breathe the Knee Deep Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd. And it's time for a review of the new Voids album, Virtue. This is the second full-length album from Art pop and experimental rock outfit The Voids, formerly known as Julian Casablancas and The Voids because the band was formed uh, by the famed New York singer and Strokes frontman, and they've changed their name simply to The Voids, I guess in the spirit of unity, cohesion, I don't know. But what I do know is I thought their last full-length album, Tyranny, was a, a pretty good record. The record contained the very immediate balladry and compelling rock songwriting that you usually get in anything, almost anything, connected to Julian Casablancas. But then there was also something about the band that was totally out there, super indulgent, which gave their music this, uh, uh, very weird edge in all of the guitar riffs on this thing that were super abrasive, super grating, the somewhat muddy, very wonked out mixes. And then there were also tracks on this thing that were like these monstrously sad and spacious 10 minute odysseys, uh, like human sadness. Even though some parts of this record might have been a little difficult to digest, there was something kind of thrilling about its unorthodoxy for me, which is something I was hoping to get a second helping of on this new album over here. Now, by comparison, I don't think Virtue is nearly as noisy or as abstract as its predecessor. Pretty much all the songs on this thing have some pretty straightforward hooks. All the tracks round out at an average length of time. But I do think Julian maintains quite a bit of lyrical personality on this album, even if uh, some elements of it are a bit more tame. And on the whole, I think this album is a more versatile record than Tyranny, to the point where it is much more difficult to pin down. This thing dishes out numerous warped, risky tunes that kind of add up into a really admirable freak show. Even if it does kick things off kind of mild with the track Leave It In My Dreams, which sonically is coming from very familiar territory, there's just something about the pacing of the song that feels a lot like a Strokes track, but maybe it's uh, just a bit sassier, and instrumentally a lot odder, of course, with these mutant guitar solos and some weird synths and and very strange vocalizations from Julian at some points on the track. As he's going into his upper register, he really is letting loose on this one. But then immediately after this very mild but enjoyable song, Voids just throw listeners into the raging rapids with Curious. This thing is like a moody, post-punky piece of Middle Eastern electro, uh, fit with a uh, uh, s some weird auto-tune solos on the back end that are reminiscent of Kanye West's 808s and Heartbreak. Yeah, it's 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 that all over the place. The tune is super solid too, with some hooky background vocals that uh, stick into my head instantly. An undeniable groove as well. The song Pyramid of Bones is one of the most blatantly political songs on the entire record, talking about, don't believe the, the white man's lies, man. Yeah, at some points on this record, Julian's lyrics sound like uh, the, the ravings of a, of a mad hippie, but... Honestly, if I was going to listen to a mad hippie ranting in 2018, this this is the soundtrack I would want it to happen to. All of Julian's words about propaganda and disinformation are set to these incredibly driving, crunchy guitar riffs. And there's a weirdly gothic instrumental bridge on this track that goes over really well, a very noisy ending too. The song Permanent High School is yet another track that at its core feels like a very sad, dreary strokes tune, but there's enough change up instrumentally and aesthetically that it feels refreshing and interesting. I feel somewhat similarly about the very soulful and sweet track Lazy Boy, which features some great drum guitar syncopations. The song Alienation feels like I'm listening to very sad, sanitized, futuristic elevator music, like I'm, like I'm riding up the elevator at my desk job in the year 2048 and I know that once I reach the top floor, I'm gonna get fired. The instrumental and the vocals on this track are just are just life-sucking, and I mean that in the best way possible. Another highlight on this thing is the incredibly funky all words are made up. This thing is like polyrhythmic junkyard synth funk for Spin Doctors fans living in the apocalypse. There's some very odd harmonized robot vocals at some point on the song too that really stuck with me. And this is one of many tracks on this record that not only blends numerous genres together into a violently catchy cacophony, but also it's, it's one of a few tracks here that feels like it's living in the past, present, and future all at the same time. The song Think Before You Drink is a decent acoustic centerpiece on the album. The acoustic guitar just kind of serves as a foundation for this story that Julian tells about being young, being safe, 
being protected, and then as he grows older, goes out into the world, goes to school, he's being lied to, he's being poisoned, he's being ushered into the mentality of the status quo. Julian Casablancas is so frickin' woke. Again, it's kind of pretentious, it's, it's kind of like, wake up sheeple! But the way that he frames it, it's kind of hard to disagree with it. Uh, while recently Julian Casablancas may have done that uh, little vulture interview where he said tons of ridiculous things, the way that he frames some of his ideas in his lyrics are so general that you can really apply what he's saying to a lot of different perspectives. In a way, I feel like a lot of what Julian is saying here is indicative of this immense amount of distrust that I feel like everyone has for the world around them right now. What's unfortunate for me after this track is that the album hits a pretty major lull, starting off with the song Wink. Another track on the album that's pretty out there, pretty odd, but at the end of the day, I, I feel like this is one of the experiments that could have been left on the cutting room floor. I mean, it, it sounds like Julian crooning needlessly over an endless Vampire Weekend demo. Instrumentally, it's super rough. Do not think the guitar line fits into this track at all. The instrumental is super repetitive, super tedious, You've heard pretty much everything the song has to offer by the halfway point. The song's finish is like this oddly long fade out that just kind of brings the song to a fizzled ending. While not as awful instrumentally, the following two tracks, My Friend the Walls and Pink Ocean, are, are nearly as tedious. Thankfully, the song Black Hole kind of flies in toward the back end of the record and breaks up this pattern of monotony with these thumping kick drums and burning, fuzzy, roaring bass and these guitar leads that are kind of layered over one another and have a very sour sound to them. And the intensity of this track is is just really smothered aggressively by a song just a few tracks down the road, which is maybe the most explosive and aggressive song the entire album has to offer. The band suddenly tones things down with the pretty powerful closer pointlessness. The track just feels like being slowly swallowed in this digital hopelessness. Occasionally these rays of light shine down through Julian Casablancas' falsetto, but uh, they, they sort of disappear. They're, they're not staying. It's, ho it's hopeless, it's over, it's done. You know, th this was just a quality batshit rock album. You know, and, and it's pretty sweet because we just had another one with that Jack White album. I felt like Julian and the band were just doing their best to advance the sound of this genre. Uh, bring other competing ideas and sounds into it while maintaining the rage and the and the wild demeanor that, that made it so great to begin with. This is the kind of blended everything but the kitchen sink experimentation I would just love to hear going forward. And there were just a lot of great highlights on this record from front to back. Now, there were a handful of songs that to me felt like the band wasn't pushing it far enough, honestly. And a few tracks where I felt like they rested a little bit too much on how weird a song sounded for its entertainment value, as opposed to just making sure that there's a good song at the core of that track. Still though, even at its worst, what the Voids are trying to pull off on this record is at least admirable. And even though Virtue is a bit shorter than its predecessor, I still think this thing was a bit bloated. Like a couple of the paler songs on this thing could have been left on the cutting room floor. It would have made a tighter, more exciting experience, but still feeling a strong seven to a light eight on this thing. Transition, have you given this album a listen? Did you love it, did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like, please subscribe, and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, The Voids, forever.